Let's look at the four resistor bias network. Bipolar junction transistors have widely varying values for beta. That makes using a simple RB between the base and VCC for biasing a problem because it sets the base current instead of the collector current. Setting the collector current will keep the transistor from saturating due to VCE getting too large from the beta variations. For this reason, designers use current sources or the four resistor bias network shown here which also has the effect of making the Q point, that's VCE comma IC, independent of beta. Let's learn how to analyze a four resistor bias network. The first step is to make a Thevenin equivalent circuit of R1, R2, and VCC at the base of the transistor as shown down here. <clears throat> Once you've done this, you write a loop equation around the base loop as shown for IB and hence IC. Here's the equation right here. It's the sum of the currents around the loop is zero. So you get zero equals minus VTH plus RTH times IB plus the 0.7 volts across the base emitter junction, plus the current going through the RE, which is beta plus 1 IB, multiplied by RE, and then you're back where you started. So that's the sum of the voltages around the loop. <clears throat> Generally, the next step is to uh, just solve for the IB you have here, and uh, you can certainly do that from this equation because all the other values are known, and you can get... Uh, get the Q point from that. Now, under special circumstances, um, we can make an approximation. In general, IB is much, much less than IC because of this uh, expression here, IC equals beta IB, with beta being 100. So uh, we can often ignore this 1 in the beta plus 1 term because 101 versus 100 is almost going to make no difference. And in the case where this term RTH times IB is much less than beta times IB times RE, then we can make things much simpler. Let's just look at how that works. So if that's the case, you can say that RTH is much, much less than beta RE just by dividing off the IBs. And then remember RTH over here is the parallel combination of R1 and R2, and the parallel combination is always less than either one of the uh, resistors. So you can say RTH is less than R2. Therefore, if beta plus, I mean beta times RE is much, much greater than R2, then this also holds it's much, much greater than uh, R RTH. And in that case, we can approximate IB, um, this, this term, we can approximate this term right here, RTH IB is zero, and then basically the, the, the voltage at the base is just this VTH. In other words, we're neglecting the drop across this resistor right here so that the voltage here at the base is the same as the voltage at VTH. And that voltage is very easy to calculate from the original circuit here just using a voltage divider. That's how we got VTH in the first place. So <clears throat> you, you, can, you can see VTH then becomes uh, the base voltage. And if that's the case, you can rewrite this equation right here using the beta times IB is IC, ignoring this term, and you end up with this thing right here, minus VTH plus 0.7 plus ICRE is approximately zero, which gives you IC equals VTH minus 0.7 over RE, which is not a function of beta which means that when the beta of the transistor changed because you put a new one in there with a much different beta, the circuit still operates. <clears throat>